Hello, my beautiful family. It is now Tuesday afternoon, and I am sitting here listening to Christmas music, and I am so at peace, it's really hard to describe. We found out last night, and talk about on time, we found out last night in my husband's job that the last week of December, from the 22nd until January 2nd, all the guys at the shop will be off of work. At that point, we have talked about doing our pantry challenge. Well, this is in about two weeks when that's going to hit. So officially, as of right now, Parton's Heritage Homestead is on their pantry challenge. At this point, we have to start buckling down. We have to start saving and conserving because it will be, by the time these guys go back to work, at least two weeks after before everything starts flowing in income again. So it's time for us to buckle down the hatches. It is time for this family to prepare for our winter. Now, most pantry challenges will start at the first week of January and they will go for one month. Us, unfortunately, and then again, is it really unfortunate we will go a couple months, maybe one or two months further than that. So theirs is usually January to February. Ours, we will usually go till about March or April. And that's by choice. We're going to take as far as we can because one of the main reasons is we like to use up our stocks to replenish with new. And at that point, we will start all over again up until next winter, just like we are now. Does that mean that we will not be shopping, period, these couple months? No. The sad part is, that is impossible. We live in a city base. Our farm and our homestead isn't super huge to actually have a farm. We don't have our own cattle, our own goats, our own pigs, our own meat sources other than poultry and eggs. So we will have to go to the store. We have to get our milk. We have to do our cheese. However, I can make homemade cheese to cut my cost. And I will be making videos along the way. I told you my videos from here on through starting on the pantry challenge starts with what we have here making everything homemade. Now we actually had a soft setting so far in our videos of working our way into this challenge and now it is full-fledged there is no way about it we have to be full-fledged it was before christmas and we're going to try to work things out we still have our christmas dinner which we have that set aside i am going to be making a video on how we prepare our christmas dinner because all we are doing is a buffet we choose a family tradition every year to do buffet style and ours will be mediterranean low carb all american mix and so i will show you what we do i actually had to show this one to you y'all i had a friend i was helping her with some work and she gave me this shirt i thought was so cute and so fitting for this homestead and it actually says i googled my symptoms turns out i need more chickens that couldn't be further from the truth because I actually do need more chickens. So we're going to be starting that in spring too. I have some offers coming up. Please don't think I'm a sellout, y'all. If I find things that are going to benefit my family community, I'm going to test them out. And I will see about giving them, or getting this out to you as far as good deals that I find or good deals that come to me. I will promise you this. I'm not changing like everybody else. I find it is this is something that will benefit me or anybody else who's living a self-sustaining lifestyle, I will do so. I will do what I can to make sure that you guys have what is the best. I will always, will not lie whatsoever, I am going to give my 100% evaluation on anything that may come my way. If I don't think it's worth it, you will hear that from me. I will not lie for anybody. I don't care who it is. It doesn't mean that much to me to have someone come to me, will you test my product? 
and in live forum. I just can't do that because I have your thoughts in mind. I have your pockets in mind and I don't have a major company. So you will get my full-fledged promise. My reviews will be honest. So please don't hate me. <laughs> I really think that if, I mean, I've, I've had the opportunities and I have seen some of the homesteaders. How do you think I got the Pullman loaf pan? How do you think I found the bread slicing um, guide? Y'all, these have helped me and it helped me to be able to bring that to my homestead. So I am getting offers and I am considering, but I'm not taking all of them. There were some Quite a few I turned down, y'all. They just were not worth it. Um, I tend to look further into the products that come my way than most would. So I, I'm very picky and very choosy what comes our way. So with that, um, I figured I'd let you know we have two items coming up that I'm going to share with you. And I will give you my review. Today. As we are on the pantry challenge, I have a Mediterranean meal that I am fixing to make. I am making a his and hers meal tonight. Tonight for hubby, I have a small deer roast. And so I am going to make him some deer stew for him um, using some turnips. And if I think I have turnips in there, I'm pretty sure I do. But if not, I have some little potatoes, baby potatoes. He won't get a whole lot of them. And I'll put that in his stew. So currently he's having that. Me, on the other hand, I have some leftover turkey pieces. And so I'm trying to think of what I can do. Well, I have some canelli beans. And I have an amazing, from the Mediterranean dish, her recipe is out of this world, uh, Mediterranean dish with canelli beans. I'm going to absolutely have these. And then I started thinking I have to get, I have to do something with this bok choy. So this bok choy, our baby bok choy that we picked the other day, we're actually going to turn this into a Caesar salad. That's what I said. I'm going to have fresh kale or bok choy Caesar salad. You don't always have to have lettuce. That looked absolutely to, amazing to me. And so that's what we're going to make out of some of this. And my husband can have that with his stew. I'm also going to be making and teaching you, which I tried this. Y'all, oh, I am having a very, very hard time. In this jar is some homemade bread. This happens to be the sourdough. I also have some that are seasoned with from Thanksgiving, and I have regular. All of these breads I turned into croutons. I dried them out in the food or in the dehydrator, and I jarred them up. Well, I just took some out, and I'm going to show you how to do that because we're going to add that to our bok choy salad. So, I took the seed as the uh, sourdough, and these, oh, 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 these are amazing. I will never, I'm telling you, after I, I couldn't, I, there's not enough for my salad. I got to make more. Um, I'm bad at that. I, I'm going to be making some more of these and I'm going to show you how to do it in a clean, healthy way. The flavoring to this is freaking out of this world, to be honest with you. And I absolutely love this. This is something I will definitely keep from now on, even if I have to bake a loaf just to turn it into croutons. I, I, there's no way I'm ever buying them again. So let's go to the kitchen, y'all. I love you. It's a great day. It's sunny it's cold but it's a great day and i couldn't be at further peace i know what's coming ahead of us but i also know that our god has got us there's nothing to be worried about if i worry it's not going to change my situations the guys are still going to be off work for a week the bills are going to get paid somehow some way we don't know how but it ain't something we haven't done before I could cry, gripe, and complain, but it isn't still going to change the situation. Bills still have to be paid. If it means we have to buckle down, so be it. If it means that we have to sacrifice, so be it. Let's do this. Let's get it through. It's only for a couple weeks. And then again, we choose to go further. So can we replenish so that we could start something fresh? Because we got a seed haul coming up. Yep, we are going to be doing that seed haul 
next month with you guys. We're going to let you know what this farm uses. I'm going to show you the storage boxes, which I have videos way down in the bottom of the 200 list of these items already. But we're starting a fresh new year, and so we're going ahead with you. Some of you asked for a live from our family, and we are forming together our very first live video. I don't know how this works because we've never done that, but our entire family on this homestead is coming to you all for Christmas. Now, this will be a couple days early before Christmas, but we want to give you a special thanks from all seven of us. So look forward to that video coming up too. Now, before I get even more emotional because it's just a great day, let's go to the kitchen. Y'all, on the way to the kitchen, you had to forgive me. I took a brief moment, and I had to take a brief moment because I had something so, so sweet that just happened. I don't, I'm in awe. I, I am completely in awe. Coffee time will consist of a new coffee mug, you all. This one here, it is gorgeous. I got to show it to you. Whoosh, sorry about that. It says blessings. You are a blessing to so many people. And it's the most prettiest coffee mug I have ever seen. Miss Gina. Thank you. Folks, you don't have to get me anything. But please know that when something this special comes my way, it is extremely touching. Because I never thought I would have such a loving beautiful family community like you are i do this because i do love you i do this because i know what it feels like to be left behind tossed and nobody completely understands you you have a disability of some sort or you have a health issue and you can't participate it's kind of like rudolph and the red-nosed reindeer we just don't fit in everybody else's games but you know what we are a family and when this comes my way, please know I do not take this for granted. This is amazing, and I thank you. And she wasn't done. She went even a step further for me because, y'all, I do have my measurements. I have measuring spoons all over the place, but this one was extra special because it's got measurements I don't have on mine. This beautiful bag that this came in, and she sent me the sweetest most precious measuring spoons. And no, this wasn't part of the promotion that I was talking about earlier. All This is a gift from one of our family members that a, a leveler, she's seen me using my spoon, I reckon. And then these most amazing uh, measuring spoons on both sides. This is, thank you, Miss Gina. Thank you so much. You, that's, that's amazing. And I'm sending you hugs from Mississippi right now, and I'm probably crying on your shoulders right now out of joy. Thank you so, so much for this. You didn't have to do that. And for many of you who've been asking, I don't know how beneficial it will be to us, but me and my husband were talking yesterday. I mean, we try not to do things that we, you know, don't have to spend on. And like I said, we are not expecting anything from anybody. So please know that. But many of you have been asking for an address from us. So I am going to later this afternoon, we are going to get a small PL box. And I will be starting to add that to the main topic of our channel. For a little while, I'm going to include the PL box number and address in the uh, description box below of all of our videos so that you know what our address is you already know that we have an email it's in the channel uh, description so i'm going to go ahead and do a p.o box because even just letters y'all you're so touching and we enjoy it we do 
but Miss Gina, my goodness, darling, thank you. This is our new coffee time mug. So before I start bawling like a baby again, let's go to the kitchen. Okay, y'all, let's make our dressing. I wish you could hear this Christmas music. We've kept our channel in decent standards and good reputation, so we don't want to get no marks against us, or I absolutely would. We'd be listening to Christmas music while we're cooking in the kitchen. So we're going to start making our Caesar dressing. Now, I will tell you, I'm not using any raw eggs in this. It's actually going to be a creamy based, but even one that a diabetic at this point could absolutely enjoy. So we're going to need one cup of mayonnaise. Now, I'm not, uh, I will just put the description, uh, the recipe in the description box below for you. You know how I work. I give you the full recipe, even if I'm not using all of it. And for two people, I really don't need to. Okay, so one cup of mayonnaise. We need a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Okay, well, let's face it. That ain't a quarter cup. Honestly, cheese is cheese. I happen to like cheese. I don't know if anybody else does. But add your preference because that's exactly what I'm going to do. So we're just going to add our cheese. I'm going to use some of this to sprinkle on top afterwards. I need one clove of garlic. And I am actually going to use some of this minced garlic. One clove can equal about a tablespoon or so. So I'm just going to add... Maybe about a half a teaspoon. Oh, Miss Gina, these are amazing. I love this. They're magnetic too, so they stay together nicely. You made my life in the kitchen so much fun. Okay, I'm going to add. I can add more later on for that. Oh, these are amazing. Okay, and now we're going to need one tablespoon of lemon juice. Again, I don't have any fresh, so it's going to be bottled. It will work. It's not going to hurt nothing. And we need a tablespoon. Okay. And then we have one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. That one, this one bottle was really hard to pronounce for the longest time for me. But I finally learned how to pronounce it. We need a half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. This is my homemade mustard from our pantry, Dijon. We need a teaspoon of anchovy paste. Now, I use anchovy paste or I use regular anchovies. The anchovy paste you can find in Walmart, in case you're looking for it, you can find it in the area where you get your canned chicken or, or, or canned tuna, your uh, crab meat, all of those canned areas, you can find anchovy paste at. It's uh, Reese's anchovy paste. And so that was a teaspoon. I'm just going to go ahead and add my paste in here. Now this is a bit hard. One handed like this. So I'm just going to squeeze this up here. I keep mine in the refrigerator y'all. So it keeps it fresh. We'll be right back. Okay, we got it now. I wasn't going to struggle with this thing. And there's a teaspoon of that. 
and then we need just a little bit of fresh black pepper now I'm not adding salt to this because the Parmesan and the uh, anchovy paste have their own salt so that's plenty enough to add to this dish and I'm just going to mix this all together and it looks like a big old mess right here we're going to take this now and massage this into our bok choy so let me clean this area up and then I will show you how we're going to dress our bok choy okay now this is a messy job so you can take two in a bigger bowl than this two spoons whatever forks mix this all together but I'm literally going to massage this dressing into this and go from there probably not going to use even all of this right now I still have some more bok choy so I can add another batch for something but I am actually going to toss this up in this mix really well into my bok choy y'all this looks so amazing we have some baby quails or some quail eggs that I am fixing to boil up to add to this I have some turkey pieces that I'm going to add to this this is going to be my supper tonight with the cannelli beans and I will go ahead mainly I'm just going to go ahead and do my whole supper with you tonight I think that would be amazing to show you all this now this is tossed we're going to set this aside now i'm going to put this in the refrigerator let it chill we're going to put the rest of this dressing away for another meal and we'll be back so i can show you how to do these croutons all right y'all let's get started on these oh my goodness where have you been all my life croutons y'all someone had mentioned that i am a foodie i am i am such a foodie i can actually be a very foodie snob if you ask me too because i'm very particular on flavor if it doesn't it, I, I i'm not just a foodie for just anything i do happen to love a lot of flavor i love gourmet i love foods from around the world and not just anything works so i guess i'm kind of a snob and that's why when i bring food to you i'm going to make sure that it's of good quality because it's who i am it's what i worked hard to become of who I am and I'm proud of that I, I'm not a papered chef that was always my dream but it never happened so I just became a self-taught chef I had an opportunity of amazing executive chef who before he passed away took me under his wing he coached me in a lot of things and he inspired me to keep moving when young papered arrogant chefs cut me down so this executive chef was he was my best friend and he was absolutely amazing i'm grateful for him and i'm grateful for his teachings that he taught me so anyways and i started that in here i needed to actually do another step so we're going to put these in our bowl first i got carried away thinking about my chef friend and then I am going to be adding some olive oil. I'm using healthy fats in these. That's about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in these. And then I'm going to add a pinch of Italian seasoning. There's about a quarter of a cup, maybe a half of these breadcrumbs. But honestly... Make it to your preference because these actually make a really good snack too. The last batch didn't last me long. I'm going to be honest. And this is any breadcrumb. From any bread that you have that is fresh, whether it be stale, whatever, turn them into breadcrumbs. These happen to be sourdough. They get that perfect sour taste to this with the flavorings. It just sets this off to, oh Lord, another place I never tasted before. And it's actually making me want to make some more sourdough sandwich bread, honestly, for a big batch of this this winter. So I am currently feeding my sourdough starter because that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to try to make it in my Pullman bread pan. So now that I've massaged this, we're going to actually heat these up. So I'm going to take just a tad bit. 
about a teaspoon because we do have olive oil in our breadcrumbs but one can never get really too much olive oil because it's really good for you and we're going to heat this up we're going to literally try to bake these flavors in here now like i said i do have some sandwich bread that i made also that has um the seasoned like poultry seasoning um turkey dressing seasoning mix in it so that would make beautiful croutons as well we're going to heat this up once this gets heated up we'll be right back okay y'all so now i'm going to add just a little bit more of a healthy fat and i'm making that with this homemade ghee to give that little bit richer buttery flavor on top of the olive oil and then we're just going to blend this in here with all the seasonings in it i'm also going to add a pinch of garlic powder to this some salt and just a tad bit of pepper We take just a pinch, because this is a small amount, we'll just take a pinch or so of garlic powder. This is my homemade. Just a tad bit of salt, not a whole lot. And just a bit more of pepper. And that's it. That's all this needs you can bake this if you choose to you can put these in an air fryer do not do it long you really don't have to especially if you've dried them already i'm just adding the moisture to these season them up just a little bit i can't remember the name of the restaurant that served them like this it was somewhat like this i think it was TGI Fridays or something they had a salad bar with these kind of buttery and I think they fried theirs but there was fresh bread that they did it with they were amazing and this just tops right up there but just slightly better so we're going to go ahead and heat these up and we'll be back just as soon oh I can smell that already Whew. we'll be right back Okay, y'all, so they're nice and heated. We're going to give it a final toss. And we're going to set these aside now, and we're going to let these cool off a bit, and we're just going to add them to our salad. And we'll be right back. All right, my family, so now these are cooled off, and so now we just sprinkle them up into our salad. And that's it. This is amazing. I have tasted it, and wow. Now, I understand bok choy is not an easy one to literally buy at the grocery store. Now, I did not buy this. We grew this on our farm, and I showed you the video where we were picking it. And I'm actually, as it wilted down some, I'm actually going to add some more bok choy to this. But, bok choy, to give you a little bit of history of it, or... My experience of it, bok choy is super easy to grow, y'all. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. It's not a very fussy plant. Um, by seed, you get quite a bit. And it could be one of those, in the right circumstances, a cut and come again, which means you cut it and it can regrow. So I have grown these in the summer. But they prefer the cool weather. So basically, in my preference, if you were going to grow bok choy, I would grow them either in the winter or in the spring. The other thing about bok choy, these are baby bok choys. So it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. You can literally plant these in a grower. You can plant these in some of the things that I'm fixing to show you coming up indoors on your tabletop. And I have... A product that I'm going to be bringing to you about it and we can grow these indoors so um, bok choy this is an amazing nutrient dish I absolutely love it cooked or grilled I love it when it's just like this just raw 
So I thought I'd let you know this isn't from a store. And if you're lucky to find some at a store, please do. Um, but other than that, they're super easy to grow. If you have a small space apartment, fabric grow pots, or just a grow pot, sprinkle in some seeds, grow your own. They're amazing, and they have such good flavor. They're in the cabbage family. So I encourage you to try this. Now, the next dish it will work on, which I have already done with you, is we're going to be doing the cannelli beans one more time. And that's going to be my dinner. And Hubby's is still in the crock pot. It's been cooking since this morning. It will cook all day until he comes home from work. So we'll do the cannelli beans one more time. And that'll be the end of this supper. I almost forgot y'all we are working with together on this sourdough starter so I just went and got mine we are on day two now if you started with me yesterday I hope you brought yours out please let me know in the comments below how you are doing we're gonna pull this one out and take a good look and see what's happening with our sourdough starter here and I happen to notice I don't know if you can see this but we got bubbles forming y'all right here we got some right here, right here. It's starting, it's getting that, it doesn't actually have that sourdough uh, smell yet. It's going to take a while before it establishes that. I am getting a little bit of hooch, but so far we're doing okay, which means it's going to about to get hungry. So I'm going to say on day three, this one is going to want to be fed. I'm starting to see some bubble activity on the top. We're starting to see some down here. This is not rising. I didn't expect it to. We didn't want it. We needed to build its bacteria up. So, so far, it is working. And we're going to put this back in the pantry. We're going to let it sit another day. We'll come back tomorrow with this one. And we'll decide what we're going to do from there. I think this one is going to want to be fed. So... I'm going to seal my lid, take it back a notch, cover it up, and we're going to go put this back in the pantry where it was cool for it to stay in there. In the meantime, this one, it's time to be fed. I am going to take you through the process of how I feed my one, a little over one year old starter and show you what discard is and all that stuff. So let me get this baby put back and we'll come back with my best friend in my kitchen. Okay, y'all, so now we're going to go ahead and feed this big old boy. I'm going to take the contents of this entire jar, and I'm going to separately put it in another bowl. I'm going to scrape, scrape this out as much as I can. Now, this is going to make a mess. I'm not going to actually clean this jar up yet. I'm just going to try to scrape it down afterwards and clean it up as much as possible. I don't do this every time I feed as far as clean up. But I too try to keep my jars as clean as possible, which I explained to you all why. This is a big old mess in here, but it's worth it because I use a lot of this discard. And if I wanted to at this moment, I could use this to make some bread out of without having to uh, use the yeast to it. But because I'm going to wait a little bit, it will end up having to be used with yeast. So, I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit here, clean off these sides, and then we're going to start feeding this big old boy. This is my pride and joy. Now, I started it from scratch, and it was the most satisfying thing ever uh, to, to know that I conquered and succeeded in making my own sourdough starter. So, let me go ahead and get a, a rag. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Okay, y'all. So, we got this cleaned up now. I'm going to tear what is called tearing out my scale to a zero. Oh, Lord. Okay, this one don't want to work right. Hang on a second. All right. So, I want 100 grams of sourdough starter to start with we are doing a one two two ratio so i'm going to pour in here 100 grams of starter 
the one is my starter point the two is the flower and the other two is my water pay close attention to this if it goes slightly over on this it doesn't matter I just don't want it to go too crazy and there we have it 100 grams now this that's left over this is what's called discard this is what we are not going to use, but we can use for so many other things. Don't ever throw that away. If anything, you can use this in your compost. So, okay, so I am just hair over. I'm about 102, so I'm going to go ahead and take some of this out. Even at 102, it wouldn't have mattered too much. Okay, there it is at 100. So now I've got this at 100. Now the 2, 2 is, like I said, my flour and water. I'm using the same mix with the whole wheat flour and the unbleached bread flour for my mixture in this one, just like we have with our baby. So I'm going to tear this out again, clear it, and then we're going to fill this with 200 grams of our flour mixture. That is double the amount of the first initial one. So say if you do an instance, not to confuse you, you put in 25 grams of starter. If you were to do a 1 to 2 ratio, think of this 25 twice on the flour and the water. So it would be 25 grams starter, 50 grams flour, 50 grams water. This one. 100 grams starter, 200 grams flour, 200 grams water. Hopefully I made that make sense. So you can understand what people talk about when it calls to ratios. I'm going to try and get 200 grams of this. And if not, I'm going to have to subst it. And it looks like I may have to. That's right, I do have to because I forgot I used part of this, y'all, when we made up our babies together. So I'm going to have to make up a batch right quick so I can finish this. So I will be right back. Okay. So now we got this settled and I'm going to go ahead and finish this out so we can get our 200 grams in here. Ooh, nope, we're still good at the moment. Just a little bit more, and there we have it. I have just a hair over, so I'm just going to take some of this out. And there we have it. There is our 200 grams of flour. We're going to tear this out, clear it, and then now we're going to add our 200 grams of water. And again, I'll end up having to get some of this. So, add that in here. And you can make this lukewarm if you want to. It doesn't really matter. I usually just set mine on the counter. And after all this time, especially if I'm going to use it soon, and I am actually getting ready to use mine to make another loaf. I'm going to try another uh, sandwich bread out of it. Almost there, y'all. There it is. Wow, that was perfect. So, at this point now, I take and clear this out. Take it off my scale, clear out my scale, turn it off, and I am going to stir this. Set this aside here, and we're just going to stir this and make sure it's fully incorporated, adding everything together, and this will be thick. I prefer mine thick. To me, it just makes, it does thin out on its own, so once it starts to get feeding, 
but having it thicker i've learned i've had the thinner uh sourdough starters and i will tell you the hydration on it was awful it needed to be fed so much so when i started using the thicker thicker methods my sourdough actually became a whole lot happier so everybody has their own preference i just prefer mine to be just a little bit thicker and i like to make mine happy as you can see it was it's pretty thick now but honestly it was like this and this will run right out of the bowl so it that's what happens after the next day i'm just going to clean this around my edges try to get the best i can at cleaning it off scrape out my spatula back into here put all my starter back in and at this point this equals out to almost two cups uh, once it's through rising it'll be about two cups of sourdough starter so I mean there's enough in here to make a nice recipe I was lacking that for a little while okay so clean this off on the edge then I'm going to put my top on this and we're going to just set it aside now being this old of a starter I have a choice to do one or two things I can let this sit on my counter let it do its thing it's rising all overnight or at this point right after feeding it I can take and put this straight into the refrigerator and it can stay there for at least a week um, before I have to feed it again it will be a slow feeding process at that point so either way if you're not going to bake um, every single day or you don't want to continue to keep feeding your starter feed it put it in your refrigerator just let it sit there so hopefully that helped you but we did check on our baby we'll be back tomorrow on that one and see how this baby needs if it, it's starting to look like it's going to need fed so we'll see what happens let me know again what yours does and now we're going to get to the cannelli beans okay y'all so going ahead and get this started get it finished hubby is on his way working towards the shop and back home so i'm going to add about a tablespoon worth this is for one person two people actually but I'm going to give you the full recipe again. This recipe has been put down in the description below on another video. That one is the 15 minute garlic parmesan cannelli recipe. Or the garlic parmesan cannelli. It is amazing. Um, it's from the Mediterranean dish. Uh, <laughs> Susie is an amazing cook. So this is just that same recipe. And I'm just using what I have at home. So I'm going to heat this up. Once I heat this up, I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, we got our oil heated. We're going to go ahead and add some of our garlic. And that would be four to five cloves of minced garlic. I'm going to actually go ahead and add a teaspoon of minced garlic to this. Maybe even two teaspoons, I would say. Four to five, that's quite a bit, so. I'll go with a teaspoon and a half. Turn this down just a little bit. I do not want this burning. It makes garlic very bitter. I'm just doing this lightly. Okay, moving this down off of my heat, dropping down this, and then I'm going to go ahead and automatically start adding our beans into our pan. And then, which that was one 15 ounce can of beans, recipe X for two. This is, uh, the recipe is for four servings. This is for about two servings. Now I'm going to add half a cup of chicken broth. You can use plain water if you wanted to. And I'm just going to let this simmer right now. 
till these beans believe it or not they may be from the store you may think that they are cooked but these beans will absorb this juice so right now I'm going to go ahead and let this absorb in here uh, I'm going to cover it up and we will be back and let these cook just for a little bit so we will be right back okay so we do not want to lose all of our liquid from here so they've absorbed at least half of this liquid and I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my ingredients which is my seasonings the next one would be adding some chopped fresh parsley in here and I had some surprisingly still in my herb bed so we are definitely going to use it I love the freshness I'm going to mix this together. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of what's called Aloppo pepper. Now unfortunately, I do not have the Mediterranean Aloppo pepper, but I can do a substitution of it. So I will be using part paprika, part red pepper flakes. That's about as close to Aloppo pepper as I'm going to get. Now it calls for one teaspoon of Aloppo pepper. So what I am actually going to be using is a half teaspoon of each. And we're going to be using now half teaspoon of paprika. A half teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And there's just enough of that Aloppo flavoring. One day I will get some actual uh, Mediterranean Aloppo. And then I need a quarter teaspoon of cumin. I love these beans and I've never been a person for beans but there is something about these beans that are absolutely amazing now I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of water because mine ended up drying out and I don't want that oh Y'all, if you could smell this in my kitchen, it's a Mediterranean whew, goodness in here. Now the other next is the adding just a pinch of salt and some pepper to this. There's a pinch of salt. Now I'm going to add a little bit of pepper right here. And then the last is adding some Parmesan cheese. And what I like to do is I will add, when I go to serve this, I will add some of my homemade feta cheese to this dish. And that is it. I will be serving this with my um, Caesar salad bok choy. And in that salad, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of turkey meat to it. This is my dinner, while hubby has deer stew that's been simmering all day in the crock pot with turnips for his potatoes, and I have this. It's a his and hers meal, fit for a king and queen, basically. I love this dish. It, this was all of what we had in our pantry, and I turned it into an amazing meal. So... We are finished with this, and I will be back with you in just a second. And that will conclude our day in the kitchen, y'all. Um, we had worked with our sourdough. We did some checking up on it. We made a beautiful meal straight from our pantry. As I said, this is the beginning of our pantry challenge. Also, while I was in the process of doing all this, 
I did take a break for a minute. We did get our P.O. box, so um, it is P.O. box 100, uh, West Point, Mississippi, 39773. I put it in the community section for those who are subscribers and in the description of our channel. So that way you all have the P.O. box and we look forward to hearing your letters and all that. So we thank you. Please understand you do not have to do anything. This is a test run if I really want to keep this. We have it for six months right now. So we're going to see if it's worth keeping or not. Um, and, you know, honestly, even one or two letters to me, that's worth keeping because I get to hear from you. So we'll see how this goes. And until then, much love. Seriously, much love to y'all. I have been all day. I'm thinking of the watching Christmas movies in this beautiful mug with some hot cocoa and it's like getting a warm hug. Miss Gina, you hugged me in a, such a beautiful way. I, I don't know how to thank you. I just, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So, and these measuring spoons have been awesome. I've been working with them all day. I love it. So, and I didn't know that they were magnetic. I didn't pay attention. That was super cool. So I love you all so much and we will see you again from Parton's Heritage Homestead.